Hello everyone, welcome to Codex Camp. So we are at the second day of May Liquid Challenge and we are going to cover another interesting problem today which is course schedule 3. So now we are given a 2D matrix as our input which are the courses which actually points at the duration of the course and the last day to complete the course. And we have to return the maximum number of course we can finish within the given time frame. And we cannot attend two course at the same time. So let's understand this problem with an example. So let's go through quickly the given example to understand this problem. So in this example, the first course given is 100 days course and we have to complete it within 200 days. So as you can complete within the 200 day, the first course we are attending. So consider we are completing this course on 100th day, starting from the 0th day. So now we are at the day 100. So if we are going to start any course, we have to start that course from the 100th day to complete it. So now our second course is of day 200. So if we are starting on our 100th day to complete the course 2, we will take 100 plus 200, which is 300 days. So on 300th day, you will be completing course 1 and 2. So moving on to our third course, 1000 days duration and we have to finish it off on 1250th day. So now if we are attending this course 3, then we are starting from the day 300 and on 1300th day only, we will be finishing this course. So in that case, it crosses the timeline so we can not actually take this course 3. So we are not including that course into our plan. So moving on to our fourth course, which is of duration 2000. So on 300th day, we are trying to take the course 4 because we cannot take the course 3 as the timeline exceeded. So again, on 300th day, if we are trying to take the course, we will finish that on 2300th day, which is actually which is within the time frame it has given because the course has to be completed before 300th day. So as we can complete the course 4 as well, so we can complete course 1, 2 and 4. So totally 3 number of courses we can complete within the time frame that is going to be an output that we are returning. So how are we going to approach this problem? Though it is a hard problem category in lead code, once you understand it, it is very easy to implement. So let's go to our implementation part. So let's move step by step towards our solution. Consider this first example, we have two courses. The course 1's duration is 400 and course 2's duration is 300. So let's start considering finishing our course 1 first and then going on to our course 2. So we have the maximum number of days here is 1200. So let us have a timeline from 0th day to 1200. How many course we can actually complete out of these two courses? So if we are trying to finish the first course first, Starting from the 0th day, on 400th day, you will be completing your course 1. And if you see the timeline given, on 1200th day, you should complete your course 1 and that is also satisfied. So now, once we finish the course 1, we are move, trying to move to our course 2. The course 2's duration is 300. If you are starting on your 400th day, because you have finished your course 1 by now. So on 400th day, you are starting your course 2 and 300 days going forward you will be completing the course 2 and once you finish the course 2 you will be on 700th day because first 400 days for course 1 and next 300 days for course 2 but here the timeline given is 500 that is before 500th day you have to complete your course 2 that is not being satisfied in that case this is not possible that is completing your course 2 is not possible after completing the course 1 so now consider the same example that is course 1 and course 2 with the same duration. We are trying to take the course 2 first and then moving on to our course 1. So in that case, we will be completing our course 2 on 300 day. That is, it has 300 duration and we are completing starting from the 0th day. The course 2 will be finished on 300th day. So now the timeline or the last day to finish the course is 500 that is satisfied. So now after finishing this, we are moving on to our course 1, which is starting on our 300th day and for next 400 days, it goes on. And once you finish your course 1, after 400 day, it will be at 700th day. So 
here the timeline to complete the first course given is 1200 which is also satisfied so within 700 days you can complete both the courses that is the maximum you can cover in the given syllabus so what is the intuition we get from this example so if we want to complete as many number of courses we wanted then we have to first consider finishing the courses with less number of end days than moving on to more number of end days because as we have less number of end days we have to finish it as soon or as early as possible and then moving on to higher number of end days will actually help us to finish more number of courses than doing it in the other way so now we have to pick the courses which are having less number of end days so how do we do that so we are going to sort the given courses in such a way that they are starting or in ascending order by the number of end days that is the second value of any given array so the first step here is to sort the given arrays based on the end days to understand the second step of a solution let us consider this example so here starting our first course which is of duration three and within five days you have to complete so here the first condition we have to check is whether we can finish it off in five days yes we can finish it off before five days so starting our first course we are going to attend our first course for the first three days so yes after finishing our course two first three days will be occupied so our next course is of 12 days duration and we have to finish it before 16th day so here we are going to maintain a variable time which actually pointed at which day we are right now so after finishing our first course starting from the zeroth day we will be at the third day because it is of duration three so once we finish it we'll be at third day so now after finishing this course if we are trying to take up the 12 day course then after finishing the 12 day course we will be at our 15th day so why are we calculating this because we need to check whether we are attending this course within the time limit given so for the second course the time limit given is 16 if we are taking up this course then we actually can finish it before its timeline so we are going to take the course 2 as well so once we took the course 2 we will be at our 15th day so now we are moving on to our course 3 which is of duration 2 and we have to finish it off on our 17th day so on 15th day if we are trying to take course 3 which is of du duration 2 we will be at our 17th day so which is actually the time exact time limit we have we have given we can complete the course on 17th day so we are trying to take the third course as well so yes we are now at our 17th day after finishing three courses now jumping on to our fourth course now we are at a 17th day and the duration of our fourth course is five if we are trying to add five to the timeline and we will be finishing this course on 22nd day but the time limit given here is 18 so in that case we cannot pick this course because we cannot complete it before the 18th day so now moving on to our next course which is five since we are not taking our course 4, our 5 is also going to start from the 17th day and if we are adding 3, it has to be completed on day 20. Still, we cannot complete this course as well because it has to be finished on 19th day. So, jumping on to our 6th course and we are trying to add 4 with 17. So, 17 plus 4 will actually give you 21st day and we cannot complete within 20th day. So, we cannot take up this course as well. So, here we are missing three courses if suppose we are going to remove one of the attended courses out of these three courses we want to replace one course and check whether we can attend more than one courses in future so in that case we have to choose the highest duration course so that we'll get so much time so we are going to replace the course of duration 12 and try to take up any other course if we are taking 12 or removing 12 in that case we can finish the course 1 and course 3 within 5 days because the course 1 duration is 3 and course 3's duration is 2 so so far within 5 days you can complete two courses and after fifth day if we are trying to take all three courses 4 5 6 we can take all three because on fifth day you will be starting your course four on tenth day you will be finishing your course four and on 13th day you'll be finishing your course five and on 18th day you'll be finishing your course 
6. So in that case, by ignoring the course 2 of duration 12, we can actually attend 5 courses. But just by attending the course 2, you can attend only 3 courses. So what we actually did, we actually removed or swapped our longest duration course with the shorter ones. So that is what we are also going to do in our program. We are going to keep track of all the courses duration in a heap. So this heap is a max heap. So we are going to hold minimum values and push out the maximum values once it is not needed. So what we are going to do is we are going to maintain a heap. In that heap, we are going to push all courses duration that we have attended. So if we are coming across any course that we cannot attend within the given duration, in that case, we are going to remove or swap with already attended course and attend the new course, which is of lesser duration. So hope you understood the concept. Let's go for a quick dry run before going to the implementation of code. So here I'm going to maintain a max heap, which is going to hold all the duration of the attended courses. So once we don't need that course, or if we found a lesser duration course, then we are going to pull out the maximum duration and swap the courses. And we are going to maintain a variable time, which is going to point at the actual day, which day we are actually in. So starting from our course one, if we finishing the course, we'll be at third day and I'm pushing the course number into my heap. So moving on to my course 2, so here the course 2 duration is 12 and if we are adding 12 to 3 then we will be on 15th day. Yes, we can attend the course as the timeline is 16 so we are going to push 12 to our heap. Moving on to our course 3, course 3's duration is 2. If we add 2 we will be on 17th day and actually we can finish that on 17th day so we are again going to push that course to our heap as well. Moving on to our fourth course where the duration is 5. And if we add 5 to 17, it is going to give us 22. We cannot attend this course before 18. So in that case, I'm going to check if there is any longer duration course we have already attended. So if we check that into our heap, we have 12 inside, which is the longest out of all courses we have attended. So we are going to push that 12 out of heap and put 5 to our heap. Because we are going to attend a lesser duration course and pull out the longer duration course. So in that case, what happens to our time? So here, once you added the course 4 to our timeline, we will be at the 22nd day. Since we popped out 12, that is a 12 duration course, which means we did not attend that. So we have to subtract 12 from our 22, which actually make us to stay at the 10th day of the courses. So we, we are right now at the 10th day. So moving on to our course 5, which is 3. So from 10, we are going to add 3. So, which actually changed it to 13th day. So, we can attend it before the 19th day. So, we are again pushing that to our heap. Now, 3 also enters our heap. So, now moving on to our last course 6, which is of duration 4. So, four, 13 plus 4 actually gives us 17. We can finish that before 20th day. So, we are again going to push this as well to our heap. So, 4 also enters our heap. So, in that case, our iteration is over. Now, size of our heap is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 which is the actual number of courses we took within the maximum time frame. So 5 is going to be our output. So hope you are understanding the solution. So this is going to work in n log n time complexity as we are going to push all our values or courses into our heap, which is going to take log n time. And we are going to sort the given array, which is again going to take one more log n time. So overall it is going to take 2 into log n time. And we are iterating the given array after sorting, which is going to take log n time. So overall, it is going to take n log n time complexity. So let's go to code now. So yes, as I said, I'm going to sort my given array based on the second values of courses. So once it is sorted, I'm going to implement my max heap using priority queue. So here I'm going to sort the values based on higher to lower because we want to pull out the maximum duration course from our heap. So once we are implementing it in queue, we have to sort the values in descending order so that when we pull a value or pull a value from our queue, then it is going to return the highest duration course. 
So yes, as I said, I'm going to maintain a variable time, which is going to start at our, our zeroth day. And I'm going to iterate through my given array, which is going to take the big O of n time. So here, I'm going to take the first course time and add it to my time. That is, the course of zero index will be having the duration of the course. And once it is done, I'm going to add that to our queue because our queue will hold the attended courses. And I'm checking if my time is greater than C of 1, which is actually the end date of completing that course. If that is the case, we cannot complete that course. So we are trying to replace it with the higher valued course. So that will be at the front of the, our queue as we have sorted it in the descending order. So we are subtracting the time from the actual day and that's it. So once the iteration is done, our queue will be having the number of courses attended. So we have to return queue.size as our output. So yes, let's run and try. So yes, our solution is accepted and runs in 35 milliseconds. So thanks for watching the video. If you like the video, hit like, subscribe and let me know in comments. Thank you.